If you want a brand new car and you don't really care what the car drives like, you want a really long warranty and you want a fair bit of value for money, this is it. This is the right car for you. It's the Mitsubishi ASX and I'm going to tell you all about it in this review. Thanks for watching, my name's Matt. This channel's called The Right Car, where I help you find the right car for your needs, and I think this could be a better option for most people who don't want a cheap Chinese SUV. But let me tell you why in this test. Cheap, budget, cut price, affordable, call it what you will, the ASX has stood the test of time when it comes to being a value-focused small SUV, and it still is. There's a bunch of different variants available, and while there are newcomers that are coming in to steal the ASX's sales, it still has a fair bit of appeal across the entire range from a value-for-money perspective. So let's take a look at the entry-level version. It's called the GS, and it starts from less than $24,000. But for that sort of money, you aren't getting a whole lot of tech or, I guess, spec. You're getting LED headlights and daytime running lights, which is nice, but you get um, steel wheels with hubcaps. And they don't look fantastic. On the inside, it gets an 8-inch touchscreen media system and a four-speaker stereo, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So it's just like this one here, which is the ES, but it adds 18-inch alloy wheels. And they do look a lot nicer than those base model steelies. Cloth trim on the inside, and it does have an auto dimming rear view mirror like all versions do. This version also adds reversing sensors, and there's a rear view camera across every single model in the range, too. The version up from here is called the MR. It's still got the same engine as this one, but it's got a black pack for the exterior. So 18 inch black wheels, black grille. It's also got keyless entry and push button start, which do make a difference to your life if you are after something that's a bit more convenient. And I reckon it could be a pretty good choice for those who want something that looks a little bit sportier. The step up from there is the LS and it does revert back to the shiny exterior finishes. It's also got roof rails as well to separate it from the lower grade versions and a bunch of active safety technology that you don't get unless you're spending that kind of money. Then from there it's the GSR version which reverts to the black pack look but also adds a more powerful 2.4 litre four-cylinder engine under the bonnet. More power, more torque and more sportiness sort of. Uh, it's also got a different interior look with a micro suede and fake leather trim. And then at the top of the range is the Exceed, which also has that 2.4 litre engine and all the safety gear as well. But it also adds a panoramic sunroof and leather seats and driver's seat electric adjustment and heated front seats too. So if you are after a lot of stuff for your money, then the Exceed might stand out. But if it was me buying one of these cars, I would probably go for the GSR. But I'm not sure I'd want one of these cars to live with. I'll tell you some of the best alternatives to it in the next section. Alternatives to the ASX are plentiful. There are heaps of small SUVs that offer lots of value for money. However, if you are looking at something really, really budget, then there aren't that many that stand out as really, really good options or alternatives, I would say. One of them though is the Kia Seltos. If you're happy to live with an entry level version of that car, which does feel a little bit base model, then you will be getting a very practical and very thoughtful car with a much nicer interior than this car. And I reckon it looks better on the outside too. Just a shame it has halogen headlights, which look rubbish and they are rubbish. Another alternative that you might want to consider it is a Chinese SUV, the MG ZS T. Now the T is important because it means you get the turbo engine and the safety tech you should be getting. And it does have a long warranty. It's got plenty of tech and gear on the inside. Starts from a very attractive price point and it looks good too. And finally, there's another Kia on my small SUV look list that I recommend you have a look at. It's the Kia Stonic. Now that's based on the Rio hatchback, so it is a slightly smaller car than this. It's got a smaller boot and smaller back seat as a result of that. But if you are after a pretty compact little SUV that's big on value for money, and there's even a sporty turbo version, well, it could be the right car for you. The ASX has been around for what feels like half of my adult life. It launched way back in 2010, uh, when I was 25? Yeah, so um, it is an old car, 
does have some old tech, but I reckon it still looks pretty fresh. Um, Mitsubishi's done a really good job of keeping this car looking up to date. And I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that there's 18 inch alloy wheels on almost all the versions, LED lights as well, which is a really nice thing to see. And it's got a long wheelbase as well, despite the fact that this is sort of in that sweet spot that I always talk about when it comes to small SUVs, about 4.4 meters long, just under. So it is urban friendly and it's also family friendly. Let me show you the boot. One of the best things about the ASX has always been how big the boot is. It is small family friendly. And what I mean by that is you can fit a pram and some shopping bags or a week's worth of luggage in the back of this car. You'll see the number on your screen now for the liters available to you, but it is definitely family friendly. Like I said, underneath here, you will find that there's, well, this car has a, a mat in it, which I don't think is standard. It might be an accessory, but there is a space saver spare wheel underneath there as well, which is nice to see. Little storage sections on the edges of the boot area as well. So you might be able to put your milk or your bread in there so it doesn't go flying around in the boot. But look, I reckon it's pretty good for this size of car. So if you've sat in an MG ZST or a Chariot Motor 5 and then you've sat in an ASX and gone, oh, is that it? Um, I could totally understand that because this is a very basic interior. Remember, this car has been around for a very, very, very long time and the interior has changed over the years, but it isn't necessarily as up to date as it could be, especially in this sort of second from bottom tier model. Now, I actually like the minimalism of the interior. Um, I like that it's got knobs for the controls for the air conditioning. And I like that the screen also has knobs and some buttons down below to make it easier to interact with. It's also got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so it does meet the needs of the modern day user. It's just not looking as, um, I guess, appealing as it could. Now, in front of the driver, there is a little driver info screen as well. It doesn't have a digital speedometer, which is one of the things that I hate about this car most. If you've been booked for doing three or four kilometers over, you'll know the pain that that might cause you. And there's also a pretty painful uh, steering wheel experience. It's a plastic wheel. It's not very nice to hold on to. The buttons on here are very, very minimal as well. And it does feel, well, basic. If you're okay with basic, then this could be a fantastic car for you. But it's also got some pretty good storage in here too. A couple of cup holders, a little storage cubby in front of here for your wallet or maybe your phone. Um, you've got bottle holders in the doors and a covered center console bin with a 12 volt port in there as well. So it is basic but functional. And I guess that's the whole point of this car. Let's check out the back seat and see if it is too. Now I mentioned that this is a family friendly size SUV for the size of it. Um, part of that comes down to the fact that it's got the same wheelbase as the old Outlander. Maybe it's two generations old, but it is a pretty spacious backseat experience. So this seat's set for me at 182 centimeters or six foot tall, and I got plenty of knee room, lots of foot room, which is really cool. Lots of headroom too. And it is a pretty spacious back seat. You could fit three adults across the back if you needed to, or if you've got kids, there are ISO fix points in the window seats and three top tethers as well. Storage isn't fantastic. It does have a single mat pocket here. There's a flip down armrest with cup holders, at least in this spec. I don't know if you get them in the base model. There's no directional air vents. Um, you only get one mat pocket, as I said, no bottle holders in the doors either. So it isn't necessarily the most accommodating backseat space, but it does do the job if you just need to move people around in relative comfort, because this seat is pretty cushy. Under the bonnet of the ES, GS, MR and LS models in the range is a two liter four cylinder petrol engine, not turbocharged. It's a pretty basic engine. Um, you can get it with a six speed manual in the entry level ES, or a CVT automatic transmission for the other models in the range. Front wheel drive is standard. Look, not powerful, um, but if you want something that is a little bit more powerful, then you should be choosing either the GSR or the Exceed version. They get a 2.4 litre four cylinder petrol engine, again, not turbocharged, with a CVT automatic transmission, front wheel drive, but with 12% more power and torque. So it does make a difference. It might seem like a pretty modest or nominal upgrade in terms of power and torque, but yeah, if you want just a little bit more zest, they'd be the one to go for. 
If you haven't been able to tell already, I don't think that the ASX is the best option when it comes to the drive experience. It is fine, but that's all it is. Look, it does feel like a car that's been around for a very long time. Newer models have more high-tech, up-to-date, refined and enjoyable powertrains available. Uh, but this one here, the two-liter with the CVT, it does the job, but wow, it's, um, it's hardly what you'd call thrilling. But if you don't care, if you're not the sort of person who likes to drive or finds driving to be enjoyable at all, or maybe you just want a car that just gets the job done and you don't have to think too much about it, this will do that job for you. It has enough power and torque, even this regular two liter version has enough power and torque, even though the 2.4 liter is probably the one you want if you do like just a little bit more effortlessness in the way that your car accelerates. And a lot of that comes down to the fact that this has a CVT automatic transmission, so does the 2.4 litre version, and this 2 litre version does have a pretty raucous nature to it, especially if you are accelerating up a steep long hill, for instance, you will notice that the engine does sort of do that thing that engines with CVT autos do and go for a very long time. Sorry about that noise, but that's the facts. If you are just driving around town like I am right now, it could be fine though, because it is fine. It gets away from the line pretty quickly and it doesn't drone all that much when you are under pretty light throttle. The steering is not a highlight of this car. Look, it's adequate, but it's not exceptional. Um, but then again, this isn't a brand new car, so I don't really expect it to be. And even for things like three-point turns on, you know, tight streets, I'll do one now just for indicative purposes. And the steering doesn't have that really annoying thing where it sort of gets really heavy for no reason. It's not light at that sort of thing, but it's also not as heavy as some of the others out there. So it could make a really good urban companion for you if you are just after a little SUV that's easy to drive around town. It's not a thrill machine. Don't expect it to be and you won't be disappointed. Another thing I'll just add is if you do go over a mid corner bump, you might notice that the steering wheel might jostle around in your hands. It's not the most enjoyable feeling. And when it comes to the ride, it's okay as well. Look, I think it does a pretty good job of dealing with little bumps in the surface, but um, it's got big 18 inch alloy wheels with relatively low profile tires. So it does sort of get bucked and it does fumble a little bit over sharp joins in the road, especially if they're quite large bumps on the road surface. One thing I will say that does make the entry level or lower spec versions well, basically all versions of the ASX a little bit more livable than some of the other newer, more high-tech cars in this segment is that it doesn't have annoying safety systems interrupting the drive experience. So like in a Cherry Emota 5 or an MG ZST or some of those other more affordable Chinese, in particular, SUVs, Havel Jolien, for instance, there are some really overbearing safety systems that basically interrupt you when you're driving rather than try and help you i find they actually often hinder you in terms of making you distracted but this car doesn't have any of that i know that's not fantastic in terms of the actual safety element but it also means that the driving experience isn't spoiled it's kind of nice but otherwise look man it could be a lot worse this car isn't the worst car to drive in this segment at this sort of price point. And that's saying something for a car that's so old. Okay, let's talk efficiency for the ASX range. So the entry level manual version has an official combined cycle figure of 7.7 .7 liters per 100 Ks. And if you choose the CVT Auto with the two liter engine, the figure is 7.6 liters per 100 Ks. So slightly better. Now that's what you should be able to achieve across a mix of driving. Um, if you choose the 2.4 liter version, it's got a bigger engine, more power, more torque, but only slightly higher fuel consumption, 7.9 liters per 100 Ks, which is 
okay, but certainly not as good as it could be. Um, other SUVs in this segment do have lower claimed fuel use figures, but other SUVs in this segment have downsized turbocharged engines, which are more efficient. Having said that, in my week with this two liter CVT ES grade version, you'll see the figure on your screen now of what I achieved across a mix of real world driving. So that included, you know, the usual stuff around town, down to the shops, down to do daycare drop off and pick up and a bit of highway thrown in there as well. Um, yeah, not fantastic, but I was okay with it. Again, it could be more efficient, but it's not bad. There's a bit to cover here because the ASX's safety rating has expired twice in the life cycle of this model, which is unprecedented, I would say. Look, versions sold up till the end of 2022 were still covered with a five-star ANCAP safety rating, and this car still has the same tech that those models had. So every version comes with a form of autonomous emergency braking with forward collision warning. There's a reversing camera as standard on all grades and LED lighting with LED daytime running lights, which I think is a safety feature in itself. There's also stability control and an auto dimming rear vision mirror in every version of this car. If if you choose ES or above, then you get auto high beam lights. And if you're choosing an LS, a GSR, or an Exceed, you will get some extra safety technology, including a lane departure warning system, blind spot monitoring, and rear cross traffic alert. All of those sorts of things that you will find as standard on lower spec versions of competitor cars. But those other competitor cars do cost more money. So it's really gonna depend what you want if you are after the best safety technology that you can get because I don't think you can get the best safety tech in the ASX. So if you buy a Mitsubishi, you get a 10 year warranty. Not so fast, champ. It's got a five year, 100,000 K warranty if you don't service with the brand. But if you do service with Mitsubishi, it's extendable out to 10 years, 200,000 Ks. So if you are okay with servicing your car with Mitsubishi, that will suit you. And speaking of servicing, there's 12 month, 15,000 kilometer intervals for this car, which is about what you would expect. I've done the pricing average uh, on your screen now over that 10 year cap price servicing plan period. And it isn't the most affordable car to maintain for what is a pretty basic cheap little car. Now, there's also four years of roadside assist available. Again, you have to service it through Mitsubishi if you want that. Look, the ASX is not a fantastic car to drive and it is feeling its age in a lot of ways, but it's still also really, really impressive value for money. And it's proven to be a super reliable small SUV over the years that it's been around and on sale. So it could be a really good option for you if you just want trouble free motoring and you don't want to have to pay an arm and a leg for it, then yeah, maybe check it out. It's uh, maybe a little bit better than I was expecting it might be after all these years, even though I personally wouldn't choose this car for me. But let me know what you would do in the comments section below if you are looking for a small SUV. If you've bought one recently, what did you buy and why? I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already, hit like and subscribe and join the community, have your say in the comments, and also make sure you hit the bell to keep up to date with all of my video reviews. Plenty more coming. See you soon.